Good morning. Today we cover uh, the notes for the third day, and we're, we're just going to focus on solving quadratic equations by completing the square. So take a minute to write down these three trinomials, and I purposely left this last number, the constant, blank. Okay? And I highlighted in yellow, too, that the last symbol is always going to be a plus sign. Okay, because remember, in a perfect squared trinomial, okay, that's what we get when we square a binomial. So if we go back, and let's just do x plus 1 squared. So what that really means is x plus 1 times x plus 1, and we distribute, and we get x squared plus 1x, plus 1x, plus 1. Um, even if this was a minus sign, so go back and change this to negatives. It'd just be minus, minus, so we get minus 2x in the middle, but still negative times negative plus. So no matter whether it's a plus or minus sign, in these binomials we end up with a plus. Okay? So what we're looking for is how do we come up with that last constant? Okay? So what you do is, is you take half of 4, so this constant here is going to be 1 half of the b value, because b is first, it goes a, which is a 1, the b number, and we're trying to find the c. So take half of b, square it, and that's going to give you the c value. So half of 4 is 2, and then 2 squared, or 2 times 2, is 4. Half of 10, or negative 10, is a negative 5, and then when you square negative 5, you get a positive 25. And then half of a negative 12 is a negative 6, and then negative 6 squared is a positive 36. So we just completed the square, okay? Um, it was a binomial to start, and it, to complete the square, right, it's the perfect square trinomial, we just completed that trinomial. Okay, so if, let's look at example number one. Uh, let's do x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals, uh, let's see, in Delta Math, did they have a number there? No, zero. And they want to know that if we're using the method of completing the square, um, what number do we add, and again, it's always going to be added, to complete the square. Okay, so we look at that b value. All right, so what do we add to complete the square? Because the square is this binomial to start. We can get rid of that 4 by moving it to the other side. So some teachers might have called this the box method. Move the C, add the box. Right? So when the negative gets moved to the other side, it becomes positive. So then half of 8 is 4, and then 4 squared is 16. So what number do we add? Our answer is 16. Okay? In our next section, uh, we're going to just rewrite it in the form of the square. Okay, so example two. What is the intermediate step? In the form x plus a squared equals b as a result of completing the square. All right, so the intermediate step. So we're not solving for x just yet. So the equation looks like this. So 
So x squared plus 17x plus 9 equals 13x minus 3. So the first thing you want to do is put it in standard form. So we want to set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 13x from its like term on the left to get rid of it on the right to make it 0 and add the 3. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 12 equals 0. All right, so now we add the box to both sides. So we actually have to move the 12 back over and add the box. The 12, if it's positive here, I move it to the other side, it becomes negative. Okay, so then half of 4 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. And then now, when we factor this, this is the square of, so you, what do I square to get s squared x? And then what do we square to get 4? And that adds to 4, and that's a positive 2. So 2 squared is 4, and then 2 plus 2 is 4, equals negative 8. So what's the final answer? The final answer would be this, because this form matches this form. The square of a binomial equals some number. So the square of this binomial equals that number there. Okay? All right. We're going to complete the square here. So we're going to take it all the way through. Okay, so now we're going to, we're going to look at some examples. So I'll write the directions for all of them. Solve for x by completing the square. Okay, so this will be example 3, and let's do x squared plus 12x equals negative 27. Well, I like this example because the c is already by itself. So here's the start of the perfect square trinomial. So we just add the box to each side first, which is our placeholder. We fill the box by taking half of 12, which is 6, and then 6 squared, 36. Okay. We rewrite it as the square of, let's see, x squared is x squared, and it's going to be um, whatever sign's in the middle, so plus, and then it's 6 because 6 squared is 36, and 6 plus 6 is 12. And then on this side, 36 minus 27 is 9. Now, this is just like, I believe it was day two yesterday, where we solved doing the inverse method. So undo the square with the square root. So we have x plus 6 equals plus or minus, don't forget, the square root of 9 is 3. So then I'm going to subtract the 6. So as I said, I like to slide this number in the previous video before, so x equals negative 6 plus or minus 3. So one root, right, is negative 6 plus 3. The other root is negative 6 minus 3. As it reads, negative 6 plus 3, negative 6 minus 3. So negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3, negative 6 minus 3 is a negative 9. So our two solutions, which you can write as a solution set, are separately are a negative 3 and negative 9. Whoops, I want to use the set brackets. Okay, so these are rational roots. Okay, let's take a look at an example with irrational roots. So example number 4. So it's x squared plus 29 equals negative 12x. Well, I need the negative 12x over here, so I'm going to add the 12x. It becomes x squared plus 12x plus 29 equals 0. Um, but I need that 29 over there so I can add the box. So it becomes x squared plus 12x plus the box, and when I move the 29 to the right side, it becomes negative, uh, and then plus the box. Okay, so half of 12, right? 
Half of 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So 36 completes the square. And then now rewrite it as a square. And 36 minus 29 is 7. So it's going to be x. And then, um, well, this is the same as we just had in the last example. So the sign in the middle is plus. So plus 6 is 6 squared is 36. And 6 plus 6 is 12. Then take the square root of both sides to undo the square. x plus 6 equals plus or minus radical 7. Subtract 6. Let's get away from that green. Slide it up front. And can we reduce the square root of 7? No. A 7 only has two factors. It's prime, one in itself. There's our answer. Okay. So we're going to do one more example, um, and it's going to be multiple choice. Okay, this is the last section in Delta Math. So this is example five. All right, so which equation? has the same solution as x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals negative 3. And our answer choices, it's multiple choice, um, the first one I'll call answer choice 1 is x plus 3 squared equals 4. Number 2 right below it, x plus 3 squared equals 22. Choice 3, x minus 3 squared equals 4. And then x minus 3 squared equals 22. All right, so I'm going to bring this example down here. So it's x squared plus 6x. I'm going to add the box. And we have some number plus the box. Now, up here, let's add the 16 over to move it. And 16 minus 3 is 13. All right. So now the box, half of 6 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So then x, middle sign is plus, so plus. It's going to be 3 squared is 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6, and then equals 22. So the correct answer is this one here. All right, we have one more lesson uh, on day four, and then you have your test. So please reach out to either Mr. Hart or myself if you have any questions or need some help. Have a great day.